So right here you can see that I have my strip that I just cut out of this big sheet. Uh, I cut it 16 and a half inches which is the height of this template here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. But uh, what I did here was I just taped until the, I got to an, the edge and then I have to actually add a three quarter inch lip. So I'm going to slide this down three quarters of an inch and then I'll add on that lip at the end. Uh, it's easier to make this template without the bends for, something, for this spot so I'll just add that on. So basically all I do is I take a sharpie outline this template which fits pretty nice and if I as a rule of thumb if I leave the black line when I'm cutting then I can slowly trim it back away until it all fits tight uh, obviously you want a piece that's going to be a little bit larger so you can cut it down to fit you can't make something bigger but you can make it smaller uh, so that's that and this is the front passenger side and I have it so that I have minimal scrap you got to think about the best way to cut these things when you're using a sheet. And then for the driver's side, the driver's side is actually an inch wider because of the way the offset is in the tranny tunnel. So this piece here is actually slightly larger than this. So I could have elected to use this piece of metal right here. I could have elected to use this piece for the passenger side, but it's more efficient if I use it for the driver's side because there will be less scrap, less drop. So that's something you just got to think of when you're doing this stuff. Now you can see I'm laying out this front panel uh, where the driver's seat's gonna be. And I noticed, or I remembered that I actually have a cruise control unit that I have to put into my transmission. Uh, so in here you can see that the original hookup for the tranny is right here. But now, when I was doing this, fabricating this floor, I didn't consider this big sensor here. All I did was I took and I put my um, my original cable in there and made sure it all fit and built my floor around that. Well now I'm, what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to cut this out. Now this here is basically just a magnet kit that has this little sensor on it. So you mount this sensor near your drive shaft using the supplied bracket and then the, um, there's a wire tie here that you actually use to wire tie these small magnets. That's not a magnet. Wire tie these small magnets to your drive shaft, and then as this drive shaft spins past the unit, sends sends a signal, and obviously it tells you the speed of the drive shaft. So right here is my original yoke that I got with this used uh, rear end that I bought, and you can see right here that somebody actually tried to drill out one of the bolts that had broken off, and they drilled out really uh, off, like half a hole there, or not half a hole quite, but. They drilled off far enough to where this couldn't be retapped, and then also if you look at that right there, you can obviously tell that that's cross-threaded or crooked. So instead of running this yoke, I elected to get a new one from Yukon Gear and Axle. Uh, this is here's the part number if anybody needs it. These are for a uh, let's see, 93 to 2010 Super Duty. They're all the same. It's got the dust shield. Uh, if you notice a few of the slight differences here, the stock one has these balance holes in it, which are going to make it weaker. Uh, this one doesn't have balance holes. Uh, anyways, throw this on now that I have it and I can finally get the drive shaft mounted for good. So you can see my floor pans are turning out pretty nice. But I ran into a little problem the other day. I was taking apart a, the original crankshaft. I was trying to get the gear off and it actually slipped out of my vise over here and fell on my toe. So I broke my toe. So now I'm in a boot and I won't be able to work down here for a few days. 
and I haven't touched this since this happened. So I had it clamped in the vise here, and I had this gear puller on here because I have to get this gear off to get this plate off because someone bought this. This is just a plate, and this stinking gear won't come off. So it actually fell, and this side landed right on my toe. I thought it was tight, but it wasn't. <laughs> So now I'm just taking this time and I am working on editing this video this morning. It is actually 5.30 in the morning right now and I couldn't sleep so I came down here. And you can see that I have the flanges here which will rivet on to the tunnel which is going to come up like this obviously. And then I also welded in that uh, drive shaft loop right there which is a thicker steel and I replaced that original loop that I had right there with the sheet metal one. That way uh, my sheet metal will lay smooth on that and the radius is actually the same or it's a smooth transition so this radius up here is five inches, radius here is four inches, radius back there is three inches. So that's going to give me a smooth transition all the way so I won't have any kinks in my metal. It can just be a smooth piece all the way back. Uh, metal roller which bends the metal smoothly is only wide enough, is only 30 inches wide so this right here to here is 22 inches so I want to make it in two 22 inch pieces that will rivet together and rivet to this 14 gauge little elbow here, uh, hoop there. And I believe there's probably somewhere around 60 to 70 hours in this right now. I kind of lost track but it's looking pretty good so I'm happy with it. Uh, it's a little vacation time. Got my pajama pants on <laughs> so I'll be working on video stuff and yeah, whoopsie. No pain, no gain. Right here you can see that I made these panels and I have them clico in for the most part. Uh, what they do is they come up from the corner of each radius so that this piece is straight and all I have to make is the radius top. Uh, it's easier to make it in multiple pieces for something like this because the radiuses are all different. So I have this mounted here and up here, up here, but if you look in here, there's no support behind this. Not yet anyways. So what I did was since I built my floor out of this floor structure out of this tubing which has a radius to it that you can see I'm just using this as a template and I'm going to see that's like that. It's the same radius obviously. What I did was I just took some angle iron that I just had sitting around and I notched it and basically all I have to do is clamp it to this piece of uh, tubing, weld these back up and then I'll have a perfectly fit piece of angle iron. One thing I found that helps if you're getting bored on a project, uh, move the car to a different spot in the garage. Now you can see that it's in the front stall of the garage versus before it was back over there. So I moved it and it actually gives like a new light to the situation so it doesn't feel like I'm working on the same car. Uh, so that's a little tip if you're bored on your project, try moving it to a different spot might kind of revitalize you a little bit. Yummy! <laughs> what I'm doing right here is uh, working on this top section. And basically all I do is I take a piece of tag board and you can see that I already have some uh, uh, Clico holes set up for this whole panel here. So this panel is pretty much where it's going to be. And what I did was I just took the paper and I did the simple math which is... So that's going to give you your measurement from the start of the radius on each corner to the start of the radius on each corner. Um, so that's like 13 inches. So what I did was I just took a piece of tag board, cut it in a triangle shape like this. You can see that the bottom is wider than the top and that they're both the same angle. So you measure from center line out half of your distance or whatever. That gets you close uh, and then I cut it about an inch long and then I laid it out like this pushed it down in the corners up here. This was just a square piece but I pushed it down in the corners and then just took a razor blade and trimmed it. It's not very close but it'll work for now. So you can see I have this Clico stand and magnet it in to where it's gonna be about. And on the other side here took a razor blade and I marked where it needs to be trimmed so you can see right here. I just hit it with the razor blade just to start a cut. And obviously this pulled tight and stretched and then I click it in on this side and up here. Then down here you can see I did the same thing. See there's the lip, there's the flange where it's going to mount. And then all I did was took a razor blade and trimmed it about close. 
So now I'll take this and cut it straight, and then I'll lay it out on metal, leaving about mm, maybe a quarter of an inch on each side, so I can trim it to fit precisely afterwards, uh, including this up here. Because you can always keep taking away material, you can't add material easily. Um, and then you'll notice here that this is a pretty straight, um, pretty straight line. Sometimes if you have an extreme radius, this isn't going to be straight. But for my purposes, this is straight enough at this point. Otherwise, sometimes you have to take it and go like this, so you get a straight line, uh, depending on the radius. These right here are what you call rift nuts, R-I-V, nuts, N-U-T-S. Uh, you can see that it has the threaded end on one side and then a sleeve, so to speak, right there. Uh, this is like a press type fastener, so all you have to do is you drill your hole in your piece of metal to whatever the outside diameter of this is, this top part, so that it can slide down and drop down. And then you use a, either that tool right there, which presses it together, or you can use a nut and a bolt which will actually press this tapered shaft into the sleeve and then it'll press it tight um, into your piece of metal. So what I did here was I just took a piece of sheet metal just for practice and kind of show you uh, how it works basically. You can see that that is through the hole and this tool right here is actually a piece of junk. Uh, I just bought this one and it don't work with a dam so I'm not going to use it. Uh, I had a better one at one point but I don't know where it went. So you can see that it didn't get that thing actually in there square or f all the way in, so it's pretty much useless. Um, but anyways, you can see that it's crushed versus this one here. You can see the obvious difference. Pushes in that, sh that shaft and then it tightens in the hole. So this one here, I just drilled a 375 hole, a 3 ace hole, and put these in and now I have a threaded place to mount my panels. So let's go over to the car here and I'll show you what I mean. Right in here you can see that I have this flange here and this is just a sheet metal flange. So there's really no way to uh, tap this if you want to make your panels removable because it's just thin. It's only 18 gauge so this wouldn't really tap very well. So what you do is you use those riv nuts. You put them in there and you can see that when they're in they're flush and it gives you a nice surface or a nice spot to uh, bolt into. Now you can also do this another way with just a standard weld nut which I have in here where it got a little bit janky and here it got a little messed up because of uh, just the way this ended up working out. This 
yeah so, <laughs> so i had to use a weld nut and actually weld it in there and grind it so it looks kind of ugly but you'll never see this so that's that uh you can see i got all the rest of them along here so there's a tip for you riv nuts you can buy them at menards lowe's uh fast and all of course they work out good so i'm just going to give you a little overview of what i have done uh, i finished this tunnel as you can see it's just click coast in and then there's the uh tunnel over the transmission and that's going to be a boltable so i have to take and tap the uh, mounting flange and then up here i actually have to redo or i'm going to redo these panels here here remember for our previous episode i just had small panels coming from here to here but i decided i wanted to make this all in one panel so that it covers all this so there's less seams and it'll just look a little better uh, and then i will take all these panels out and I'll kind of mark them where I want to butyrol them and butyrol some designs into all these to make them look nice and make them stronger also. And then back here underneath this tank I have to remove this air tank and make my back pieces. So that's that. Uh, I will show the completed product in another video but for now this is going to have to work. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Tin Man, Wild Torquey. Subscribe. Woo!